All right, so today what we'll be talking about is writing equations of hyperbolas given uh, information about it, you know, the set, the center, the foci, the vertices, um, anything like that. And then we're going to talk about how we can uh, determine what the conic is based off of the general equation. Remember, the general equation was that big, long, ugly equation like like this right here. That is the general equation, and we can tell what shape this is or what conic it is based on that information. Because, you know, remember we had hyperbolas, ellipses, uh, circles, and parabolas, and each of those have its own characteristics. But first, let's uh, do this part where we're writing equations based off of information. We always uh, want to draw a sketch that'll make things a bit easier. All right, so example one, find the standard form of the equation of the specified hyperbola. The vertices are at four comma negative one, or sorry, four comma positive one and four comma positive nine, and the foci are at four comma zero and four comma 10. So we're gonna draw this. And we know one, two, three, four, and we got to go up to 10 on the Y. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we have a, a vertex at four comma one and at four comma nine. Those are vertices. And we have foci at four comma 10 and four comma zero. So remember the traverse axis is two A units long and the center is right in the middle between the vertices and the foci. So this whole, from the vertice to vertice, it's eight units. Uh, you can count that or do nine minus one, which is eight, uh, which is, and then divide by two. So nine minus one is eight divided by two is four. So four units up, one, one, two, three, four. There's my center at four comma five. So our H and K is four comma five. We need our A value. Remember the A value is the distance between the center and the vertices. So A is equal to four, which means A squared is equal to 16. Well, our C value, our C value is the distance between the center and the focus. Well, that's going to be five units away if we were to count, or 10 minus 5 is 5. So C is 5, which means C squared is equal to 25. And we know that uh, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So 25 is equal to 16 plus B squared. And we minus 16 from both sides, we get um, 9 is equal to B squared. So we have our A squared value, we have our B squared value, we have our H and K. Now we can write our equation. We need to verify what type of hyperbola this is. Because the vertices are vertically aligned and the foci are vertically aligned, this is a vertical parabola, a vertical hyperbola. So we're going to be using this equation here, y minus k squared uh, over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. So let's write that equation. Um, y minus five, the y coordinate of the vertex or the center squared over 16 minus x minus four squared over nine equals one. So this was a rare problem where everything was a nice whole number. Our a value, our b value, our c values were all um, whole numbers and not any radicals. So that would be the equation for this hyperbola with this, in this, these characteristics. All right, now let's look at letter B. We have vertices at two comma three and two comma 
negative 3 and foci at 2 comma 5 and 2 comma negative 5. So if we draw that, it's going to be just like the one we did at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 comma 3 is one vertex, 2 comma negative 3 is another vertex, and 2 comma positive 5 is a focus, and 2 comma negative 5 is the other focus. So because the vertices are line up vertically, this is going to be another um, vertical hyperbola. Our center is going to be halfway between the vertices. So we are um, at 2 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 3. So halfway between that would be right here. That would be our zero or our center. So our HK is going to be 2 comma 0. Now our A value is equal to 3 because that's the distance between the center and the vertex. So A squared is equal to 9. Uh, C squared is the distance between the center and the focus. So C, C squared. I'm sorry, C is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which means C squared is equal to 25. So this is going to be similar. C squared equals a squared plus b squared, similar to the previous problem, 25 equals 9 plus b squared, minus 9 from both sides, 16 equals b squared. So we have our b, ter b squared term now, and like we said earlier, this is a vertical hyperbola, so it's going to be y minus 0 squared over a squared is 9, minus x minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. And we don't need to write y minus 0. So y squared over 9 minus x minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. That would be our hyperbola. All right, the last one on this page, we have two vertices and it, we have a point that it goes through. So that would be like an x, y point that we can substitute into an equation uh, as needed. So let's draw what this looks like. We have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, just drawing this out. We have vertices at 0, 0, and 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So halfway between that will be our center right here in that um, our h and k is going to be 0, 2. So we have h and k. We can get our a value, right, counting, so 1, 2, so a is equal to 2 which means a squared is equal to 4. So we don't have b squared. Uh, we know that this is a vertical hyperbola because everything is lining up vertically, uh, the vertices. So we're going to use this equation here, substitute in our h and k, our y and x values, and our a squared value, and that will allow us to get our B squared value. We can solve for that. So that formula, y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. So we can substitute our h, k, x, y, and a squared. So now we can substitute instead of y minus k, it's going to be 5 minus uh, 2 squared over a squared, which is 4 minus x, which is the square root of 5, minus h, which is 0 squared, over b squared gives us 1. Well, the first fraction, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so 9 over 4, minus 
the square root of 5 minus 0 is the square root of 5, but when we square that, we get 5 over b squared equals 1. Now, instead of this being 1, I'm going to change this to 9, uh, 4 over 4, so that way when I subtract 9 fourths from both sides, I get, um, I get common denominators. So then it's going to be negative 5 over b squared equals negative 5 over 4. Now you could cross multiply and divide, but notice that the numerators are the same. Negative 5 and negative 5. Well, these two fractions are equal. So if the tops are already equal, then the bottoms have to be equal as well. And again, if you don't uh, believe me, cross multiply this and divide, and you will get that b squared is equal to 4. So now we can go back and write our final answer. y minus 2 squared over uh, 4 minus x squared over 4 equals 1. That will be our hyperbola. So it's about drawing this picture, getting an idea of what is going on, and just substituting it into these equations. Now on the next page, this is where we're going to define uh, or determine which type of conic we have from the general equation. Now you could complete the square and then compare it to the, the standard form, but that can be a lot of work, especially if you're just asked to um, determine or, or describe or tell what is this shape, what is this conic. So instead of completing the square, we're going to do it this way. Now we're going to assume that none of them are degenerate, which means uh, when we have a degenerate conic, we get something like um, equaling zero or something that doesn't make sense like x squared plus y squared equals positive 1. Um, there's no solution to that. There's no points to that. So those are degenerate conics. So for all of the ones that we're going to ask you to do, they're going to be in this form. There is no bxy value, so you, don't, you won't see a term with x and y in it. And it must equal 0, so you may have to manipulate it to get it equal to 0. And we can match up the letters. So like for a circle, A and C must be equal to each other. Um, but then I wrote in here what it means like in normal people words. So if our A value, you can see here, is in front of X squared and C is in front of Y squared, if those two are the same, then it is a circle. So in normal people words, the number in front of x and y squared are the same. That means you have a circle. Now a parabola. Now you remember when we graphed parabolas a while ago, it was, e it was like x squared equals something or y squared equals something. So we did not have both variables being squared, meaning if I were to multiply a and c, well, if one of those is 0, because if you don't have a y squared term, c is equal to 0. So if you only have one variable raised to a second power, that is a parabola. Now, the ellipse. Ellipse happens when both of the numbers um, in front of x and y are either positive or negative, but they both have to be that. So both numbers in front of x and y are either positive or negative. When you multiply those, that's how you get a times c is equal to 0. Now the hyperbola, if you're multiplying a and c, if that's less than 0 or negative, then that means it's a hyperbola. So basically, if, if your numbers in front of x and y have opposite signs, it's a hyperbola. So let's put this into practice. 
classify it as a circle, parabola, ellipse, or hyperbola. So let's look at our terms. The number in front of x squared is positive. The number in front of y squared is negative. They have opposite signs. So that means this has to be a hyperbola. Now, number two, it's 2y squared minus 3x plus 2. You only have one variable squared, and that's y. So because you don't have an x squared and you only have a y squared, this is a parabola. Number three, we have 1x squared plus 4y squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Well, the numbers in front of x squared and y squared are different, but they have the same sign. They're both positive. So that means this is an ellipse because the number in front of x squared and y squared have the same sign. Number four, x squared minus 2x plus 4y minus 1. We only have one variable squared, so that's a parabola. And then lastly, we have 4x squared minus 9x plus 4y squared minus 6y minus 8 equals 0. We have a 4 in front of x squared. We have a 4 in front of y squared. Because they are exactly the same, that gives us a circle. So by using this test, we were able to define what these shapes were without having to complete the square. Right, so hopefully that um, made things a little bit easier, you know, translating the symbols into what I call normal people words. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe.